Hello, and today we're going to take a quick look at one of these, the Plessy or Siemens PDRM82D. So this is quite interesting because obviously, I'll just shout out him before I do any further bits of the video. Surviving the Apocalypse has done a very good video on this that he sort of dedicated to me to give me some info on it. And then luckily later on I was able to get one for a reasonably decent price. So many of you who watch this channel or other radiation channels might be familiar with this. The standard Plessy PDRM82 and there's also the military variant of this in green. But basically this is about the same sensitivity as a CDV715. And it's a Geiger counter that uses a fairly insensitive gamma-only Geiger Muller tube inside the uh, plastic housing. And it has a two-digit display that will say like 0, 0.0 and then 0 0.1 when there's sort of a tenth of a centigrade in the air, so one milligray. And it's designed to go up to 300 centigrade, which is pretty much an hour's exposure to that. You're definitely dead. Um, so just as a quick e explanation of units for the people not familiar, a centigrade is basically one absorbed Rontgen. So if you have one Rontgen in the air, that's not quite a centigrade. But if you had 1.14 Rontgen in the air, that's about one centigrade's worth of exposure. Now, a centigrade is actually just a hundredth of a gray. So again, one, one gray would be about 114 Rontgen. But the point was, a lot of military applications went from using the Rontgen to the centigrade because it was a very similar sort of equivalent dose, but it was actually an absorbed Rontgen, a REM or a RAD, rather than actually being you know, just ionising units in the air at certain temperature. But so basically this is designed to tell you if you were at 0 0.1 um, centigrade all the way up to 300 centigrade. So basically at cancer causing levels of radioactive uh, exposure to, you know, you will be dead within an hour levels of radioactive exposure. The issue is it won't tell you if there's background radiation. Now, the only limit to it really doing that was the display, because if they put more decimal points in there, it could actually do that um, with the GM tube in there, but never mind. So. One of the later things that came out was the PDRM82D, and what this is, is it's a proper, as you'd sort of expect it, classic Geiger counter set up for the PDRM82. So this is a unit, um, so you turn it on, and it makes a loud brrr noise, um, and then it will start counting in a second. So unlike the standard PDRM82, you'll notice that the PDRM82D says 0 0.000 centigrade. So what that means is 0 0.001 centigrade would basically be one um, microsiever or one microgray. So basically, if you think background radiation is normally anywhere between like 0.1 and 0.3 uh, microsieverts or micrograys, depending on where you are, the PDRM82D basically tells you as soon as you're at one um, microsiever or more, all the way up to, I imagine, because um, I've not done a stress test on it, 300 sieverts, uh, sorry not 300, 300 sieverts, 300 centigrade, which is the equivalent of 3 sievert or 3 gray. So it's quite a simple unit, essentially all it is is a rubber housing on a PDRM82, but this one has a sounder module on it and a Geiger Muller probe. So here is the probe, as I said, regular PDRM82s did have a Geiger Muller tube in them, but it was just in the housing of the unit. So, as you can see, it says sensitive area there, and what you're meant to do is just hold this, and this is your probe. So it's designed to be fairly compact, obviously you can take it off of that bit if you want to fully extend it, and you get quite a lot of reach with this. Um, but I'm sure most people just have it sitting in there most of the time. And then you've got your sounder module. So what the sounder module does, you can unplug it from the bottom of the unit if you want it completely turned off, but you can turn that to make the sound quieter or louder. You can probably hear that's pretty fucking ear splitting right now. Um, so, here's what's interesting with this. Because this is a unit designed for um, kind of doomsday radiation, and it's gamma only, and it's got quite a good shield around the GM tube, you'll notice something very interesting. So let's get out our trusty bit of Fiesta wear. Now, what are you noticing? It's not really clicking any faster, is it? So, there you go. With Fiesta wear on the probe, it's not really noticing it. The reason being that Fiesta wear being sort of unenriched uranium and only a very low percentage of uranium-238 sort of glaze doesn't give off a lot of gamma rays, or at least not many that are very high. So again, it will give off more than background, but it's not that no noticeable, you know. And while this will make some Geigers go crazy, it won't with the uh, PDRM82, so that's quite interesting. But now, of course, let's just do something you all want to see. What happens if you get a Soviet Geiger counter near this thing? I think you can already hear what's happening. So here we have the classic DP63A. This is the one like Surviving the Apocalypse I've not uh, deconstructed because of how scary these things are. 
And let's see what happens if I put this on in front of the um, back screen. We're already at 25, 31, 33, 35, 37. Yeah, so that's incredibly high. So what I'm just going to do is pop this down here next to it. Get this up here so you can hopefully see it. And then I'm just going to put the probe back down there. That's not in the exact position I had it in before. It's a less sensitive area of it. But as you can see, that's quite scary. So what is really cool with this thing is because it's got quite good shielding around the tube, it only really tells you if you're experiencing scary levels of gamma. Uh, or at least scary energies of gamma. Because um, obviously a flaw of a Geiger Muller tube is it can't tell you the energy of something entering it. Because, you know, a count to a Geiger Muller tube is a count. However, if there's enough thick casing, and you can probably see how thick this probe is, around a GM tube, what actually ends up happening is the housing of this shields most of the lower energy sort of uh, rays or whatever reaching the Geiger Muller tube. Therefore, the, when the Geiger Muller tube counts, it's only counting quite strong radiation. So although it will count at background still, because back there is always background radiation, what um, is quite interesting is obviously how a Fiesta Wear plate ba you know, barely sets it off, but puts it on an old Soviet Geiger with a bit of radium in the back, you know, and it will do the same thing with radium watches, you know, CZ-137. Um, this basically only detects proper sort of scary radioactive sources, which makes this really interesting because it doesn't give you really high readings on anything, you know, not of particular. So, an interesting thing, uh, which I'll try and demonstrate to you briefly, but it'll probably be quite hard to get this on camera, is when you turn this on, it will flash up very quickly. Um, CPM, and I think it's microgray. So let's turn that off again. And if you look on the side of the panel, if I can get that to turn there. There, on the side. But basically, as what Surviving the Apocalypse thinks this might be, is that depending on which probe they had attached to this in the factory, the probes have different chips in them which will give it a different reading. So I assume the pancake probe, which should re-alpha radiation, would do the counts per second, because technically, you know, Geiger Muller tubes are meant to be using counts per second or counts per minute. And then I assume there was a more sensitive probe that was the microgray probe. But for most people, this probe would be absolutely fine, because at background levels, basically, it will just read zero. And once you get any gamma sources or X-ray sources or maybe very hard beta sources that are, you know, high enough above background that they actually might pose a threat to you, this thing will start ticking away quite happily. So there you go, this is kind of uh, a British Geiger counter from the early 2000s sort of era, used in the war in Iraq era. It's a really cool looking thing, again, it's not all that practical, you know, think, think you can get a therapy or similar in a much smaller size. It's no, you know, it's no reason that, or no mystery really, that, you know, little um, bout clip style decimeters replace these things, because they're so much smaller and do the same job. But this thing is beautiful just because it's a really loud, and sort of not that sensitive, but sensitive in the right way, kind of Geiger counter. So I would definitely believe if this thing was getting a reading, um, you know, in terms of gamma rays, that they're actually significantly harmful to you. Because as I said, the problem with radioactive sources is you can have something that gives off lots of decays, say like um, carbon-14, but because there's such low energy beta decays, as long as they're not in your body, they're not harmful at all, in all honesty. I mean, they would be, but you know, you're not going to sit around it all day, every day. So the point is, something like carbon-14 would never register on this, but radium and cesium and cobalt would, you know, things that are actually really scary. So there you go. This is a Plessy PDRM82D. This particular one was made by Siemens because Siemens bought out Plessy. But basically, um, I don't know where I put the thing now. There I did. What this essentially is, is the completely beefed up version of one of these, you know, where they said... This is kind of a practical unit. There was a different variant of this. Was it the PDRM82M that had the removable meter bit on it? I can't remember that it was designed so you could have it outside a bunker with a massive cable going to the bottom of it. But basically it's the complete sort of end of the Frankenstein series of Plessies where they just put more and more attachments onto them. And they made something really cool, don't get me wrong, I love this thing. It's brilliant. Um, 
weirdly, this it was peeling off when I got it, so I did take it off. There was a little bit of green tape on there that made it look almost like it had a backlight. It actually didn't, it's just they put some sort of green tape on it to make the display look better. I, I don't know how intentional that was. Maybe it might be so you don't get as much light glare on it, I don't know. It was quite a cool thing, but as mine was bubbled and sort of, you know, peeling off, I just took the whole thing off because otherwise, through distortion, it made the screen harder to read. But yeah, if you haven't checked out his channel, check out Surviving the Apocalypse or NI Bunker. Um, I think the URL, URL to his channel is, because he has um, an old ROC post and he's very knowledgeable about Geiger counters and radio, you know, radioactive things. So check him out if you like these sort of things. I got this on his recommendation. It's a very cool thing. I love it. Again, not as practical, sadly, as, you know, more modern little badge style size, you know, pager sort of decimeters. But this is a really cool thing and I love it to bits.